me just a little bit there. Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> welcome to today's Saturday Live. Um, the pattern for today is Zenith, which is an official Zentangle pattern. Um, I think just about everybody knows me, but for those that don't, I'm Kelly Barone, CZT, um, which means I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. Um, today's pattern is Zenith. Um, I've been trying to do these little Facebook lives on Saturdays um, since COVID started. So, so since everybody went into shutdown and I thought that there should be something to do, um, I have been doing these. Um, I have also been do going through um, Inktober live. So every, every day at 1130 I've been doing a very, very short little um, demo. Uh, today is Zenith, so I just want to mark that off um, before we get started. And um, all of the videos have been um, left up on my Facebook page, and I'm in the process of transferring them over to YouTube. So you will be able to watch them um, Permanently. I'm not sure how long Facebook lets me leave them up, and I didn't want them to get lost. So, good morning, Pam. Good morning, everybody that's just joining. Um, so, these are three little variations that I've done of Zenith. So, let's see. So, we'll start with this one, which is um, kind of your basic Zenith. So, this is the way you see it drawn um, a lot. There's another version of this that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and I'm going to demo how to do the, the basic pattern, and then we'll do some fun stuff with it as well. Um, here is, this is another way that it's drawn a lot. Um, this actually has a little bit of a pattern used to fill in, but with this one, instead of the little ball being nestled here in this little groove, it's on top. Okay, so that's uh, the two ways to the two ways that are in the official Zentangle um, kind of step outs and um, demonstrations. These are the ways that you'll find it. I am never happy with drawing a pattern the same way over and over and over. Um, it's actually become the the purpose behind me drawing or doing these little Saturday Saturday lives. I think that often we get stuck doing a pattern the same way over and over and over. We fall into a rut. And, well, you know, it can be nice to, to do your pattern in the way that's most comfortable to you. Um, you open up your tangling world when you, uh, I don't know, I guess, branch out a little bit. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. So one of the first things that I wanted to show you um, and I'm just going to just going to show you this as an idea. Um, I'm going to demo a few different things. So um, this is actually the the pattern Quinn that was another Inktober pattern. But I really liked the way that these kind of um, braided together, and I wanted something that w for the other side of the tile that would mimic that. So Zenith actually ended up being an excellent choice. I could use the same pattern, but instead of this little spike, I just put like a little bubble there um, and that worked really really well so but you can change the shape to change the pattern up okay so we're gonna get started um, I'm gonna take my little mechanical pencil here not that one that was out of lead and I'm gonna put down my dots one in each corner And then I'm going to connect my little dots to make a, a border around the outside. I say I'm going to connect the dots and then I miss them entirely because I did not get nearly enough sleep last night. You can draw this pattern going in any direction that you like. I see I have some others joining. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Sue. And I'm sure there's others as well. Um, so I have... Um, <clears throat> brand new 01 pen and if you are a tangler like me you know that that's one of the most fun and best things in the world is opening a new pen 
Um, I do tend to like to draw this on the diagonal because it gives me the most space on the tile. So I'm going to do that. Um, I like to start here and I'm going to make like a C shape. So if I, if I had the tile like this, it's like a backwards C. I'm going to come in about halfway and I'm going to curve a C in the opposite direction. I can bring this in, curve it back. So I want to keep this about even, right? So I want these bubbles to be about the same. And this is a guideline, not a rule. Um, you can get some great effects and we'll, we might even play with that depending on how much time we have um, in varying these. Varying the sizes and how closely they fit together and things like that. So I did this one at a diagonal but slightly off center because I am going to, after I draw this, I'm going to draw another half of one to make a, um, a string for my, for my tile using this as the string. Because a lot of times people will draw something and they don't realize that there's a lot of other options, a lot of different things you can do with it. That a pattern, especially a border pattern like this, can be used for um, as a string. It can be used as a border. It can be used to divide a tile. Um, so definitely things to um, to think about to use as a um, as a transition from one side of the tile to the other. So I've put in that little kind of scallopy start to this. I'm going to tilt my tile. I'm going to come up on one side. So in this little divot, I'm going to come up, up on one side. And I'm going to come down on the other. So I have like a little triangle shape. And you can do these all one side and then the other, which is what I like to do because I'm going to show you a little trick. So I make these about the same size. They don't have to be exact, but I like to make them about the same size. And you'll get a different look by varying the size of these little triangles or these little bu bubbles or embellishments. Um, don't hesitate to kind of play with those to see what look you like, right? Your tangling is going to be your tangling, and it's going to do what you want it to do. So um, while it's great to follow along and tangle along with me, it's um, I really want to see what you do with it as well, because my hope is that I spark some cool ideas that then your brain takes in whatever direction your brain wants to take it. So I have one side done. I'm going to flip my tile over. Now, I like to do this. Obviously, I didn't do it on this tile because these are super, super skinny. But if you have a nice medium-sized triangle going, you can kind of trace along. I'm not actually touching the paper but follow along this line, pick it back up on this side, bring it to a peak, and then do the same with this one so that it looks like they're kind of all connected. And I don't know if that was the intent when the pattern was created, but I like it because it looks like you have this underlying zigzag as well, right? So it looks like I could have actually done this. And I think that's a fun little feature to build into your tangle if you're looking to do something as a focus tangle. Um, when I do focus tangles, they're usually a tangle that either I do a lot of that I'm adding a very precise movement to, or it's a tangle that I have to think about a lot because having a focus tangle allows you to really concentrate on that one stroke and to really use it for um, stress reduction and relaxation. Okay. All right. So and now I'm going to come in and I am going to add an aura. So I'm just going and this time I'm going to go fairly close. You, you can vary the look of this by changing up how um, how wide this aura is too. So if this was a wider aura, you're going to get a different look than if you go fairly small and skinny. And you could do multiple auras. 
um, really it kind of is up to you. Just some ideas for playing with it. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little raspy this morning. I'm cleaning out my studio and it's dusty. Um, so I spent all day doing that yesterday. So today I have a little frog in my throat and I haven't had enough tea or enough sleep. So, alright. I am auraing the whole little zenith here. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add those little those little balls, those little orbs. So this time I'm going to add it on the top. So it's just a little orb, round-ish, but it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Okay. You can then add another aura to the whole thing. Oops, I went a little too close there. It's okay. The only one that will notice would be me. There are no mistakes in Zentangle. It's a great way to let go of your perfectionism and your um, your self-criticism. Really just kind of know that even if you have a couple little line, line wiggles or something doesn't go exactly as planned, Often it gives you a new opportunity to go in a different direction with something. And um, if it doesn't, no one's going to notice but you. There we go. So I'm going all the way around. So this has a couple little auras in it. And you can just kind of... Uh, shade on the outside you can shade on the inside where you shade on this changes it up a lot um, this one I shaded on the outside and this one I shaded on the inside so I kind of shade, shaded these little scallops and it adds to the difference in the look okay so I had said I was going to add another so I'm going to do this here so I made my little C shape curve it up C shape, curved it up. Right? So now I have, so now they kind of intersect. I'll finish this one off there. And I'm going to add, because I want these to be pretty much the same, so I'm going to add these triangles that are about the same height as these. I'm going to try and connect these ones as well. add my aura. I'm going a little faster here. I always like to tell people um, if you're following along in um, in these Tangle videos that I do, these little live demos, I do tend to go kind of fast. In a regular class I obviously go slower. Um, but I want to give you as much information in as short a time as I can because I would keep you here all day long on a Saturday. But I assume everybody else has other plans. So there we go. So now I have a couple of these in, you know, a connecting way. So now I can use this as my string. So I could put tipple there or flux here, maybe cube or cubine here. Um, to create a full tile. Good morning to everybody that just joined. Denise, I like this pattern a lot too. I think it has so many fun different things that you can do with it. Um, so I'm going to put these tile. You know what? Let me shade one of these for you. Um, I am using a 
mechanical pencil. Um, I have a love of mechanical pencils. I think that they um, allow me to get into all these little nooks and crannies um, in a way that a regular pencil tends sometimes is too uh, chubby for. My point isn't as fine as I want it to be. I'm always breaking pencil points. So all I'm doing here is I'm accenting the curves along the scallop. And the reason that I'm accenting the insides of these instead of the outside like I did here is because I want to tangle in these spots and I'm not sure what I'm going to put there yet. Okay, so I have that done. I'm going to come in with my tortillon and I'm just going to soften the graphite that I just laid down. And you can see how that makes it kind of pop up a little bit. Because when we add graphite, it makes um, makes your pattern pop. Anywhere it's darker, it looks like it's further away. So there we go. So that's our basic zenith pattern. I'm going to set that off to the side. And now I'm going to grab a new tile. Because now the fun really starts. We are going to start to do some different stuff with it. So again, I'm going to put down my dots. Make my border. I want to talk a little bit about borders, actually. Um, Zenith makes an amazing border. So just imagine this as your border all the way around a tile. But something that I like to do, um, let me see here, um, is if you've done my, it, done any of my lives before, you know I like to talk about doing like a macro version, which is actually a photography term. But um, it's a large version of a pattern. So in this instance, you know, it could be the entire size of a tile, but I'm just going to do um, larger as opposed to, you know what, let me do the macro first and then I'll, I'll do this. So a macro version of this, it's kind of like a fragment. So I would make my C shape straight across my tile, right? And then I would come in about halfway and I would curve up as if I was going to continue off and then I would flip it curve off the page so again as if this was going to go out and connect over here right and then I can come up with my triangle right and I'm going to do an aura and because this is a big tile I'm going to maybe do a bigger aura. Okay. And so this curve is kind of, you know, off to the side. So we're not going to see really see anything that's going on in these corners. But because I have that aura here, I can also aura here. And remember I told you you can do multiple auras if you want to. So you can use this to kind of fill up some of that empty space. Right? So I have a double aura there. I'm going to add part of an orb, part of an orb there. And then this is fun to, you know, maybe add in some patterns or to, let's see here, I'm going to grab my graphic pen really quick. So maybe you want to color in this big centerpiece right here. Right, and now we've used, we've used um, Zenith as a fragment. Okay, so by doing it large, doing it in a macro version, we've created this fragment to use that we can then use in really anything. Oh, I need a new graphic pen today, too. 
that's okay um, I'll come back over and finish it out later for the pattern sheet so that it's not all sketchy looking but kind of want you to get the the feel for this so I would color in this section and really you could pick and choose whichever sections that you wanted to color in maybe you wanted to color in these little crescents um, I'm also going to color in these orbs I like to leave a little speck like a highlight And then, you know, maybe I would I would actually color in this section as well. And you can choose bits and pieces to leave off as well. So you don't always have to do the outer aura. You don't always have to do this inner aura. Um, you can you can play with this pattern in so many different ways. So this is a macro version. Often people see a space in their tile and they think, oh, I don't have room for, you know, I don't have room to do a whole pattern. So sometimes it's cool to just use, you know, parts of the pattern, right? So actually I look at it like this and I see a little face. <laughs> but if I tip it to a different way, I don't. So, um, that, so that's a macro version. Now I want to do um, like a smaller fragmented version okay um, and that's why I thought it would be easier to show you this before I show you this next part so I'm going to put down my dots I'm going to make my border and now instead of doing a full border because I just showed you how to draw it um, in a straight line so you can figure out how to make it in a border you just go all the way around but what if we made a fragment, right? What if we used fragments of this and we made a C shape here in this corner and we made a C shape in this corner and a C shape in this corner and one here as well. And then we came in to each of these and we did that fragment that we just made. So all I'm doing, and if you've seen me do this before, you know that if you take a, a piece of scrap paper, there we go, right, and you lay it down next to your paper because you're not quite sure where, you're, where you would draw off the page, you can extend your page and just, so there's my C, right, and then when I take it away, I have that perfect half. And I could do it here as well, just by moving the paper. Okay, so it would kind of connect right there. So I'm going to do that on each. Okay, so now I have this, this little half fragment. Not even half fragment, but like just a fragment. And I'm going to add, let's see here. So I'm going to add a little, and I'm going to go small because I want these to be seen. So I'm going to add a little triangle in the center. You can see I'm turning my tile as I go. I'm going to add an aura. Just one little skinny one. It's okay to refine your lines as you go if you don't love them. So like I missed there, so I made sure to make it touch. Okay, now I'm going to add, instead of um, the solid little ball right there, I'm going to add a print top swirl. So it's just a little spiral because just because it shows it as an orb doesn't mean it has to be an orb. 
You can mix that up and add in a different pattern like I am here. Okay, so now I have a Printom Squirrel, or <laughs> no squirrels, <laughs> a Printom Swirl as my as my orb or as my ball. And keeping that in mind, you could also have done that here, right? I'm going, instead of doing an aura over the top, because I don't have much space here, and I may at the very end, once I, once I get this all finished and I decide what I want to do, but I'm going to add an aura on the inside of these little C shapes, right? So it kind of looks like... like stained glass or wrought iron or something, right? Okay, the shading is obviously going to stay the same. Um, I could, you know, depending on where I want to place it. I'm now going to take that print on swirl and I'm going to do A swirl and you could do multiple swirls in this triangle section to kind of fill it in or if you really didn't want to you could have just done you know some cool shading in there but I like the intricacy of adding in the other pattern And I hope you can see how, you know, you can, you can now do all kinds of cool things using this for four corners, right? I do like to add an aura along the bottom when I'm done. So to each of these. I could have gone in and I could have added print homes into each of these sections as well. And then it would have been a really, really intricate piece but I also kind of like having some white space don't be afraid of white space so there's my four corners um, to shade these I'm not going to do a ton of shading and I'm using a little skinny uh, which I just broke the point on little skinny mechanical pencil because I only want to lay down a tiny little bit of graphite so I'm actually laying the graphite around those auras so in the center of this little, what started out as a triangle, but really kind of became a diamond. Okay, so I added it there. And then I'm adding just a little hint of graphite in the corner of each of these. There are so many different variations on this that I would love to show you. We could be here all day, so I'm, I'm going to stop myself after another couple. Um, but just so you know that there are so many things that you could do with this. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, by all means, they're still up on my page. And like I said, I've been putting them on YouTube. I'll drop the link in the comments later for you if you want to go watch them. But I'll... A lot of the techniques and the different ways that I draw these can be applied to many patterns. I have about a dozen different variations that I like to do with patterns um, to kind of create a new and interesting look to change things up. I also like to add, and usually I would tangle in here first or do something here first, but because I'm not going to do that for this, for this demo piece, I'm going to show you the shading. So I like to come in and I like to add shading underneath that, that final um, little aura that we did. And then I like to smooth that um, because it makes it look kind of like photo corners. Okay, 
So there's that one. Aren't the corners fun, Lisa? I love these. Uh, Sue, I'm glad you like it as a string. I think it's just, it's so fun to do different stuff with these. So, um, and then obviously you would shade this the same way. So we have these. Which ones have I shown you so far? All right. So this is one of my favorites. Um, I like to turn things into flowers. I feel like this one calls out for it to be treated at, to a flower um, treatment. So I'm going to make a kind of curvy border here. I'm going to come in with my pen. I'm going to make these. Um, I'm going to do it kind of down here. So um, the two thirds, one third. So two thirds is going to be kind of empty. This one little third right here, I'm going to do my work. So I'm going to um, make my C, only I'm making it this time, I'm making it more bubbly. Okay, so it comes up like that. It's not very even, but you kind of get what I'm going for there. And now I'm going to, um, let's see here. Sometimes I like to practice and I come up with ideas and sometimes they work better than others. But this one really, it really calls out for it. So now I'm going to add kind of a tall, spiky little embellishment, right? I'm going to add, I'm going to skip my, um, what do you call it? I'm going to skip my little aura this time. I'm going to add a little orb. You could, um, you could make this a print tom swirl if you wanted to. I'm not going to because I'm about to use print toms again. Um, this also looks like, uh, I did this for holidays and I'm not going to do it right now, but done like this. These, um, these look, make cute little angels for a Christmas card. Uh, clouds and then the little, the little people. And then I just did like a swirl. But anyway, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a print tom swirl. I'm actually going to add... And if you make your smaller or bigger, you might get a different number. And you could certainly use this, you know, these little flowers as a border or as your corners. You would just want to make sure that you allowed for room for it. Okay. So now we have these cute little flowers. Okay. I'm going to come in down here at the bottom and I am going to finish this off with these other C's going in the opposite direction. But then I'm not going to do anything down here on the bottom. I'm just going to leave them as is. Um, I'm going to add an aura around the whole thing and you don't have to. Um, but instead of doing the whole thing, I'm just auraing aura each flower. So there we have some flowers, um, which are one of my favorite things to turn patterns into is flowers. I, I think those are super fun. But the last thing I want to show you, because it's a little tricky, um, and it's something else that I really like to do with pa my patterns, um, I'm going to show you a, a couple little things with this. So I'm going to um, I'm going to put down my dots and my border, and I'm going to do a partial. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to do a spike. Not, not a full spiral because we'll be here a while if I do that. So I'm just going to make some spirally 
So it's almost like stacked curves. Okay. I'm going to come in here, and the reason I wanted to show you this is because it can be done in a rounded shape. And it can be tricky if you haven't done it in a rounded shape before. So I always like to start just a little bit away from the end. And I like to draw my C's actually over my line. Um, so, you know what? I mean, I'm going to do an actual spiral. I'm just going to, because it can be tricky as we change sizes and stuff. And that was kind of what I wanted to show you. So I have the spiral here. And I'm going to start on the end. And I'm just going to follow along, right? So I'm going to make these C's, only now they're, you know, in more of a rounded shape. This also, this, this scallopy little part that we've started with, um, makes a beautiful ribbon. Also, it makes its own lovely border. So all we're doing is these interlocking C's going all the way around. And you know, you can adjust for little bits of line wiggle and things like that if your spiral wasn't the way you wanted it to be. You don't have to be exactly on that line. Don't beat yourself up too much if you're not. You can hear how hard I am on my pens these days. I, uh, I do a lot more with an O3 or a PN these days because I am very bad about breaking my nibs. I always tell people, you only need to hold your pen lightly, but that's more of a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. So it gets a little trickier when we get to the center, right? Because we're going to come into that curve. And that can be a little trickier to navigate. But you can do it. I have full faith in you. So this comes up like that. And then usually, um, right around here, I do one more. This one kind of, like, didn't go quite right, so it kind of goes like this. And usually I just add in a swirl or something like that. And then I do a little bit of rounding or something. And that's going to tie into my pattern anyway, so I kind of gave it a little tail. I'm going to come in now, and I'm going to add um, my, my little diamondy triangle shapes all the way around. I'm just going to do the big outside for now because um, we're going to wrap up and I still have to do my Inktober journal. But I wanted to give you that and this will be finished in the pattern sheet so you can definitely take a look and see it there. Um, but I have added these in, right? So I've got both sides with my little triangles, kind of looking like a wreath. Again, the holidays, you know, if you're think looking for ideas or things you can do. Um, Zenith isn't one that often comes to mind for people to maybe do as a wreath, but done in a green pen with some with red for those little dots would be, um, you know, would, would make it look very festive and very holiday. Or you could do it in, in um, blues and it would look kind of snowflakey. Not that officially snowflakey is a word, but... Alright, so we have that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my, 
I'm going to add an aura. So go around and add an aura. I tend to like mine to be pretty skinny. I haven't shown you varying these sizes, but I think you can figure that out. You know, I've shown you how we've kept these all the same size, but if you play with the different sizing, you're going to get a different look. I also, you can still kind of see my pencil line, um, which is okay. It's fine for it, for it to show. And most of the time, once we add shading and everything, it blends into the background. Um, I draw my pencil lines darker than I normally do when I'm under the camera so that you can see them. Um, just draw yours lighter. I'll come back and finish that off in a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of trying to get a section done so that you'll be able to see the pattern that I'm going to add to this. Okay, so that's enough of, of what I need for this segment. So now I'm going to add, this time I'm going to add little dark orbs. I want, you know, something with a little bit of pop to it. And go all the way around. I'm going to stop here, but you would go all the way around and continue that. And then I like to come in and I like to add little... Um, like little shading kind of marks, little embellishment marks. So I'm going to flick my pen from the corner. So I pull in with just a couple of little flick strokes. Um, let's see. I'm going to flip this tile over. So I would put my pen down and kind of do that, that kind of motion. And I wanted to show it a little bigger because this is kind of small. So I'm going to do that in each of these corners. And it adds some depth to that, that little curved piece. It kind of makes it look like maybe it's fabric or... Um, I always think of like theater curtains. Now you know I was a theater kid. Theater kid and an art kid. But you can see how just this little accent changes the look of the pattern quite a bit. It makes it look much more intricate. Okay, and now I have the option if I want to, I can come down from here and add the same kind of little treatment. Just alternating back and forth. This is nice and soothing to do. Um, I like to have a fairly new pen when I do this, though. So, um, you can see that that adds a lot to the, um, to the overall look. And then this one, I would shade on the outside here. So I would shade on either side once this was all done. So I'm just going to do a little bit right here. Um, actually, I, I think I'm going to add an, another aura first before I do. So just kind of aura, very close together. And you don't have to do this last aura if you don't want to. I just think it ties it nicely together. And I'm going very close. I don't care if it's very perfect or not. I just want that little extra on there. Okay, 
So then I would come in with my pencil and I would add for the pencil that I want. I would add some graphite around the outside. And what that's going to do by adding the graphite as I go around is it's going to fill up the inside between these kind of smoky. So that these little ribbons will really pop off the page. All right, so I'm going to real quick put this in my Inktober journal, and then we're going to call it a day. Um, <clears throat> I hope I gave you some ideas and some cool things that you might want to try to play with. Um, let's see here. Where do I want to do this one? I don't think I decided. All right, but I've taken a lot of your time this morning, so I'm going to do it in this section right here. I'm just going to come in, move my salt from my watercolor class last night. I'm going to go right here, and I am going to make my C's. Finish that one off. Add some cool little triangles there. Line them up down here. I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm going to add the little orbs nestled in, that, in those little spaces this time just because of the shape of my journal. Um, I like, I very much like that this is a pattern that comes with a little orb built in because I've or been incorporating these little orbs throughout my, my Inktober journal um, to kind of get a little bit of a cohesive look. Um, someone just asked for my pencil brand. These are called Mozart Supplies. They, I bought them on Amazon, but they do have a website. It's a little husband and wife artist team. Um, I like them a lot. It's a set of three. They're very inexpensive. And they came with 30 LEDs for each size. I got a three, a, f no, a three, a three, a f I'm sorry, four pencils. A three, a five, a seven, and a nine. Um, with 30 leads for each, and I think it cost me about $10. So, highly recommend. So, I've added my little auras, and then I'm going to do that little flick treatment on these because I like that. It's one of my favorite things to do with this pattern. Adds a lot of dimension, adds a little a little hint of, hint of whimsy to it which is kind of my little thing um, and then if you like to draw gems or something like that something to keep in mind is you could do these shapes instead of you know adding the little flicks or anything on there you could actually turn those into little diamondy shaped gems but I'm not doing that in here today I'm just gonna finish these off going to add in just a hint of shading and then we're all done um, next week is the last week of Inktober so I have one more week of doing daily lives um, and then I'm going to go to my go back to my Saturdays um, I did put up a post yesterday on my Facebook page saying that um, there's, you know, obviously a bunch of patterns. I would like to um, to see what my audience, what patterns my audience would like to see some variations in. What patterns do you either struggle with or 
would you are you interested in maybe trying some variations because you do them the same all the time find that post leave your your pattern suggestions there because i'm making my calendar for next month and i would love to see what everyone wants to see so everybody have a great day i will see you next week if not before and look for the pattern sheet later this afternoon where all these tiles will be finished um, so that you can use it as kind of a reference everybody have a great day and thanks for joining me